All right, good afternoon. We'll go ahead and call to order the regular meeting of the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals for August 25, 2010. First item on the agenda is the consideration of minutes for the regular meeting on July 28, 2010. Those minutes were included with the agenda materials. Are there any changes to those minutes? If not, those minutes will stand approved as presented. We'll move on to new business. And under new business, we'll first take a special use permit requests. Uh, first one there is application Z10049 by Ms. Kathy Kelly Jacobs of Rattel Brokerage for Clearwire, requesting a special use permit in order to establish a telephone or telegraph facility in a commercial highway zone for property located at 1200 Conference Center Boulevard. The applicant seeks to install antenna and equipment on the roof of the Embassy Suites Hotel. Right, Mr. Blotman, if you'd review that application for us, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers, and good afternoon, Chairman Rogers and members of the board. Our first application, as you mentioned, is to establish a telephone or telegraph facility. Uh, that's how we term it in the zoning ordinance uh, for property located at 1200 Conference Center Boulevard. Um, and as Chairman Rogers mentioned, that is the Embassy Suites Hotel uh, located just to the west of the Avenue Shopping Center. Uh, Clearwire, um, with uh, Ms. Kelly Jacobs uh, representing them, is looking to uh, uh, co-locate on the roof of the Embassy Suites Hotel. Uh, and in order to establish this use, and, uh, they're not they're not proposing to construct a tower they're actually proposing to co-locate on the roof of the hotel but regardless of the fact that they're not looking to construct a tower they still have to establish the use of the telephone or telegraph uh, facility which uh, they are looking to do here uh, there has been talk of additional carriers wanting to co-locate on the roof of the embassy suites uh, if this is approved and and if this request is approved then uh, no additional special use permits will be required. Uh, other carriers would be allowed to uh, to co-locate on the uh, on the uh, roof of the of the hotel. No height variance is required in order for them to uh, to do this. They're uh, seeking to uh, be under the height variance that was approved in 2006 for the construction of the actual Embassy Suites Hotel building which I believe was a 65-foot variance to allow the 140-foot tall building. And at the, at the uh, maximum height of the equipment on top of the hotel, that will be 107 feet. So it will fall well within the uh, height variance that was approved back in 2006 for this property and for the construction of the hotel. Uh, I've got an aerial photograph to show you. Here is the Embassy Suites Hotel. As I mentioned, just to the east is the Avenue Shopping Center, and here is Medical Center Parkway and Conference Center Boulevard uh, as it goes into the property. Uh, it's surrounded by commercial uses, uh, mostly vacant commercial parcels to the uh, north, west, and south, and of course the avenue uh, to the east. Initially in the plans that the applicant submitted, uh, she proposed actually removing panels of the parapet wall on the uh, roof of the Embassy Suites Hotel and replacing them with uh, panels that were RF friendly, uh, the term that, uh, that the applicant was using in order to establish, uh, uh, in order to establish the, uh, the strength of signal that they would need uh, in order to have those antennas on the roof of the, of the structure. Um, and they have uh, just reported back to me this morning that they will not need to do that. As a matter of fact, they will be able to go behind the existing walls and not remove the walls on the, uh, on, on the uh, top of the embassy suites. So everything will be done uh, essentially um, behind the existing walls and no, and no architectural exterior changes will need to, be, will need to take place. The uh, the overall plan for the uh, 
for the prop or for the hotel, the roof plan indicates the uh, the panels that the uh, that were initially going to be replaced, uh, but will no longer need to be replaced. And the antenna will go uh, behind these existing panels. This is the north side of the hotel, the south side of the hotel, and the east side of the hotel. And at the very northeast corner of the hotel on the roof is where the equipment cabinet would go. And now the equipment cabinet is about two feet three inches taller than the parapet wall. Uh, but according to the line of sight diagram that has been submitted uh, by the applicant, uh, it, it is uh, between 400 and 1,000 feet in various directions from the hotel to where you would actually be able to see that two feet three inches protruding uh, from the top of the uh, from the top of the uh, hotel. So very little little very minimal impact to the view shed. Mr. Blomley, can you repeat what you just said? Sure. The um, This is that line of sight diagram that, I, that I've placed in front of your uh, in front of your stations, and the elevation of the uh, the, the equipment cabinet will be uh, roughly two feet three inches taller than the top of the parapet wall, uh, and this is at the very northeast corner of the roof of the building. Um, the applicant's engineer has drafted a line of sight plan, which is what you have before you, that shows that. Uh, unless you were uh, hundreds of feet away from the building itself, you would not even be able to see that two feet three inches that protrudes above the parapet wall. I think in, in, in one of the directions it was uh, greater than a thousand feet that it, that it would not be visible. That cabinet is the only piece of equipment that will actually be uh, taller than the parapet wall itself. As far as um, the standards that are listed in the uh, zoning ordinance for telephone and telegraph uh, facilities, uh, most of those are geared towards actual new towers. And since this isn't a new tower, and since it's not increasing the height of the structure at all, um, most of those are really not applicable. Um, so um, with those, most, most of those not being applicable, the board uh, should still consider the standards of general applicability when looking at this request. Uh, the applicant proposes to install three antenna on the roof of the building in addition to the, uh, to the equipment cabinet and other miscellaneous equipment. Uh, the antenna will be located on the north, south, and west sides of the building inside the parapet wall, as I mentioned. Uh, Initially, what we were going to require the applicant to do when they were removing those sections of the parapet wall was to go through the Planning Commission's initial and final design review process because the property is located in the Gateway Design Overlay District and any exterior material changes uh, have to go before the Planning Commission for uh, initial and final design review. Uh, but because the need to replace those panels is no longer there, and the building will basically remain intact from the exterior outward. Um, the, it will, the condition number one, which was that the subject development must receive initial design review and final design review approval from the Planning Commission, um, that recommended condition is no longer applicable and uh, their plans can be reviewed administratively by the staff because no exterior changes are being made um, uh, outside of those parapet walls. If the board approves this special use permit request, staff still does recommend the following conditions. Uh, all applicable permits must be obtained from the Building and Codes Department prior to commencing work. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, as other carriers um, make application to the board, of, or excuse me, uh, make application for permits to co-locate on the roof of the building, uh, their applications would need to be consistent with this application. Uh, and if they deviated, they would have to go back through the Board of Zoning Appeals. But as long as they were consistent with this application, they could go straight to the Building and Codes Department for, for permitting um, and re for review and permitting. With that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions before or after the public hearing. I do have some photographs of the embassy suites. If you'd like to see them, uh, I'll leave that up to you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Blomley. Any questions for Mr. Blomley? I have one. Um, 
the antennas that you speak of, I'm assuming, won't be any taller than the um, uh, box that you were mentioning before that was going to be two and a half feet above the parapet wall. Is that a correct statement? Yes, it's my understanding that the only the only piece of equipment that will be taller than the parapet wall will be the cabinet itself. Okay. I believe the antennas are going to be uh, are going to be uh, under the the height of the parapet wall. Ms. Kelly Jacobs, is that correct? She says that's correct. Are the um, antennas then behind the parapet wall? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Blomley, I, I want to make sure I understand. You kind of covered a little bit of it in the last part of your statement, but when you say if they want to co-locate that has to be consistent with this submission. Does that mean three antennas, or would that mean additional antennas would, would, would not require us to approve it, additions to co-locate as long as it was behind the parapet wall? I mean, I guess I'm just a little unclear on when they sure. might have to come back and when they wouldn't. Sure. It, unless you were to place a limit uh, as a condition of approval on the number of carriers or the number of antenna on the roof of the on the roof of the building as long as it was structurally able to support those antenna um, uh, an unlimited number of carriers would be able to go on the roof of the building however if uh, one of the future carriers wants to um, do something that is inconsistent with with this request for example if they did want to go through and replace some of the uh, uh, some of the the wall panels, which is what the applicant has said that she does, she, she will not need to do, if they were going to do anything that's inconsistent with with their proposal, um, then so they if their antenna would rise above the parapet wall, for example. Exactly. Saying, but if we approve it as is, as long as they come in with the same antenna, they can co-locate and not get reapproval, and they would have unlimited numbers of antennas as a possibility. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. They're not really co-locating. This is the original antenna on the building. This is the first cell, cell antenna on top of this building, right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Do we know how many can can co-locate up there? You said uh, you said it's just as many as the structurally can hold, right? Right. But this is this is not like a conventional cell tower that I think of in terms of one pole and how many you can get lined up down that pole. This is something that they could scatter as many equipment boxes across that roof as the roof could structurally hold. Yes, and and one of the things that they did submit was a statement from their engineer saying that the building was was structurally sound, and then this is included in your agenda materials, was structurally sound in order to accommodate their uh, their proposed equipment. Um, and uh, I think that we would that we would be looking for similar statements for future carriers that wanted to go on the roof of the building. Future carriers would not have to have a special use permit, but would have to nevertheless come to the city for a permit. That's correct. Um, hmm. Okay. Can you kind of take the can you take the photographs there that you have and just give me a, a, a good idea of what visually we could expect to see when sure. this, when it's installed? We have a lot of these diagrams, and it looks like the some of the antennas are going to be. And I I think I know what a parapet wall is, but it's this. I mean, you'll show me here on the picture, sure. but it, but the antennas are going to be behind this parapet wall. But then it's also showing the antennas like on the corners of the buildings. I think the uh, the the equipment cabinet will actually be going on the corner. No, I mean, but I, I want to say that there was actually are there antennas that, that are on the corners of the building. In some of these in some of these drawings, that it looks like there may be. I, I would refer you to, and, and, and I, I see what you're talking about. I think the elevations are actually a little bit confusing, but the what they're calling the lease plan or the site plan that shows kind of a bird's eye view of the of the roof of the hotel. Uh, I think that's kind of that's more clear as far as what it's going to look like. Okay. And let me kind of uh, let me run through these pictures. And there's the oh. Malibu right there. All right, we're looking at the uh, north side of the of the Embassy Suites. The par that's the parapet wall, right? Right. The parapet wall is kind of the uh, 
uh, it's not a structural wall. It's it's the very top wall that that is uh, adjacent to the actual roof, Go, goes above the actual uh, floor level of the roof, and it's not uh, a structural support wall that would that would um, that would support. That's not a. It's above the actual top floor of the of the building. It's more decorative than it is than it is actual structural. And one of the antenna would go behind this portion of the parapet wall, and it would not stick up above the wall. That's correct. Here's a here's a close up of that same shot. It would go behind this area right here. Yes, Matthew. While we're on that, and there's a couple other pictures. One of the things I think we're wondering: we there are some visible antenna that you see to the right of that picture, and there's some others on some other shots of these. I think maybe that at least that's what I'm I'm kind of guessing what those are, and if those are there's another picture in there that, that clearly shows an antenna, like a TV antenna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. I see that now. I'm not sure what that, um, we could bring up the photograph. That's and this, this is the east side facing the, uh, the avenue. Um, yeah, see, it's, you can't see it on TV, but right here above this. And I'm not sure. There's one right on that steeple. Well, and that is actually a decorative architectural feature. That was, the height variance was actually to the very tip top of that, of that decorative feature on that tower. That's the 140 foot mark right there. Now the I think somebody snuck up there and put one of those old antennas. It might be <laughs> yeah. Someone's trying to get the UHF. That's right. Kind of used to go out and folks were yelling in from the house. Turn it, turn it the other way. You put the foil, put the foil on it, right? That was old remote control. Yeah. <laughs> now, and this is the east side of the building, and behind this parapet wall is where is where another the, another one of the antennas is going to go. And that's facing the avenue. And that's a close up right there. This is the south side of the building facing the interstate. And once again, there's the Malibu. Y'all didn't pick up on that in the first picture. Oh. Got to get used to seeing that instead of the That's escort. A new tradition, Melvin. New, tra new BZA tradition. Mm -hmm. And the the antenna on the south side of the building will be in this area right here. Now the actual equipment cabinet. I think the best view that I'd be able to give to you of that, this is the photograph that I showed you of the side of the building facing uh, the avenue. The equipment cabinet will be in the northeast corner of the roof, which will be kind of in this area over here. And it will stick up two and a half feet above the... Two feet, three inches. Above that wall. Okay. I guess my question is why couldn't they put that behind a parapet wall so it wouldn't stick up at all? I don't know. Okay. What and uh, Ms. Kelly Jacobs, if uh, uh, you don't mind, just come up to the podium. Matthew, and what I'm looking at is is drawing C2, it, which which looks to me to show like a cor some sort of corner antenna. That's probably the GPS. There's a little GPS antenna that they put up there that's, that's really small. Or it could be, if it's something existing, it could be a lightning. I mean, the hotel may already have like a little lightning rod or grounding rod up there. You see, you see C2? Yeah, new antennas, BTS, and microwave dishes mounted this, to the penthouse well, wall. And this is the old, these are the, let's see. I'm going to see that where he's looking at. That's whatever Gary emailed to me. This is what Gary emailed to me. 
the antennas are 42 inches high. They, go, they will go behind the wall. Originally, when we were when they were looking at the stelding for doing this, they were going to have to remove part of the parapet wall in order to put RF friendly. We we realized um, earlier this week that. The Embassy Suites already really has um, RF friendly walls. All we have to do is remove one of the backboards off of them, and they have the, a mesh with a stucco that is, will, will let RF engineering go through it so we don't have to remove it. The, the way that it's designed is that the antennas and all the equipment will go behind that wall. I'm not quite sure what it is that you're seeing. It, it, it looks like these are mounted on the outside of the They're wall. not. They're behind. The, they're going behind the wall. I think this is an older version. It's not what I delivered to you. Because remember when we first were, we, um, because when we first looked at the embassy suites, they were trying to do the stealth on the outside, and that's when we went behind. So I think these are an older version. And yeah, this is just what your engineer sent to me. Okay, but I said I delivered you some the 24 by. I, I don't know what the discrepancy okay. is. That's okay. Just what I have. Okay. Yeah, no, we're we're going behind the 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 parapet wall. Um, you, nothing will be visible from from the front of the hotel. That was kind of a condition of the embassy suites as well. Okay. These. So, that part's gone. Let's see. Yeah, these are these are. Yeah, not okay. These are not oh, correct. These are three That's from three nineteen. These are not what I what I turned in. Okay. Let's see two different, I guess. Okay. Yeah, we do have different. The full full set of drawings. So are those are the, those are the current drawings. These are. I, I, he sent you the incorrect drawings. I'm so sorry. Okay. It's not your fault. Um, that is the current, the the current drawings that we submitted with the application. Okay. Okay, I think I got it. Any other questions for either Mr. Bomley or Mr. Kelly Jacobs? Mr. Kelly Jacobs, do you have any idea how, from a technology standpoint, I assume we've talked about infinite number of co-locators there. Uh, I assume that's tech technically that wouldn't be possible because there'd be interference or something at that point. Any idea, assuming co-locators wanted to use that space, how many could, you know, um, fit up there as a practical well, matter? I know you have Verizon that's already put an application in to go up there. Verizon is behind us. And uh, the other one carriers that you would have AT&T, you know, basically the, the, the big three or four that would possibly look at going up there. Um, from the standpoint of technology, they have to have separation. Right. So you can't you can't fill up the roof, um, right. and then structurally, um, if from what we're having to go through with the BZA, a lot of the, the big carriers they do use the bigger shelter. So more than likely they'll have to you know condense their equipment size down to fit the structure. So you're probably looking at maybe three three carriers out there, three to four maximum that could possibly go up there, and that's just if it's structurally sound enough. Now the Embassy Suite has is a co-locate friendly landlord is what we refer to them because they do create a space. For the carrier, so they build their buildings anticipating the revenue. So um, they typically will build it for you know three to four carriers. Okay. All right. Thank you. At this time, we'll go ahead and conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application? If you would, please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussions or motion. I'd just like to make a comment. I, I think this is a very good idea. I'm not big on putting poles anywhere, uh, especially near a residential area, and I think it's a, it's a great thing that uh, embassy suites and um, clear wire, I guess that's, uh, uh, takes this approach uh, because as long as it goes like it's set to go, I think that's a great way to to do business. So, just to, to feedback on what you said, that Mr. Halliburton is that is that when we do have opportunities like this, this does eliminate the need for uh, the, to construct a new tower. So it's. Uh, uh, it's one less tower that will have to end up coming before the Board of Zoning Appeals. I know that those are always something that we that we grapple with, making them uh, making the construction of them sensitive to the uh, to the context of the neighborhood around it. And before we make a motion, are are, 
Are we clear on what plan we are approving? I, we, we, we are. I, I think that she has indicated that that the that the full set of plans is the correct set of plans. But but one thing that um, I think wouldn't be a bad idea, and just so that we have it on record for for any future carriers that that may look to get building permits to to locate on top of the building, is that uh, perhaps a, a second condition could be added that that. Uh, no equipment will be allowed on the uh, no equipment or antenna will be allowed on the on the outside of the of the building itself. Just to kind of uh, uh, as a belts and suspenders approach, Vice Chairman Young, uh, to make sure that it's on record that uh, since there was a little bit of confusion with the plans that were submitted. Well, and, and also you have implied the issue of uh, it being visible above the walls too. This, this is when it's, it's, it's better because most everything except two feet three inches is, is hidden behind walls. And I mean, obviously, if that could continue, that would be better. I think whatever conditions that the board feels is appropriate to ensure that that future uh, carriers on top of the building um, know what the board's expectations are. I think. Whatever you feel is correct would be good. If there's no further discussion, I'll make a motion that we approve um, this application subject to staff comments, including I would put on here not only this particular uh, application, but any future applications be that that all equipment, including box, uh, equipment boxes and or um, antennas, be behind the parapet wall, and since we're about to, well, my motion is going, I said approve, that we wouldn't be any more than two feet three inches uh, above the parapet wall, irrespective of what equipment we're speaking of in, on any future applications. That's my motion. No second? We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just didn't hear your motion say outside. That was one of the things that he said uh, outside of the <laughs> building. I, think I can say that. that. I, what I meant to say was that it, all equipment would be inside the parapet wall. I, I don't know if I said that or not. But I, th I think I think we we got the gist of okay. your motion. Further discussion. That <laughs> looks like he just got something. He's My only thought about the motion is if if we limit it to two feet three inches, we could. There's nothing in our motion that says that it has. If it's behind the parapet wall, it could be. The reason this is not visible is because they moved it back from the wall. So if we have two feet three inches, there's nothing that would say it couldn't be right next to the parapet wall, which means now it would be directly visible. The only reason that's not visible is because it's back. I don't really, I don't know if I'm smart enough to word a motion that way, but you understand what I'm saying. The, 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 that's my only hesitation. The, the, the concern I had with your motion, Kim, was that it, it, it addressed future applications, that future applications couldn't do this, this, and this. I'm not sure that, that we could restrict applications that aren't even, haven't been filed yet. But what I think Matthew is saying is that we can approve a baseline um, situation, and then if anybody came later that sought to exceed that baseline, then they would have to come back to the BZA for approval. So if we, if the motion was in the in the context of we're approving this and the plan, and, and we're approving this set of plans that show everything mounted inside the parapet wall except for the cabinet box that sticks above that sticks above the parapet wall two feet three inches then and, and subject to the remaining staff comments then that's probably a little more address what we're trying to or more address what we're trying to accomplish right yeah I, I think I think you're right chairman Rogers in that in that um, what we're doing is we're approving this use for the property and it, it just so happens that the applicant is 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 the first to want to locate on, on the roof but this application essentially establishes the use. So if we set, 
if we set conditions, then those conditions would, by default, apply to all, all future, uh, the baseline conditions would, by default, apply to all future applications for co-location on the roof. Well, one thing that, that I'm concerned about is that um, you know, Ms. Kelly Jacobs mentioned that, um, that uh, larger scale carriers might, might have larger equipment, might have uh, uh, um, cabinets that may be a little bit bigger. I'm curious if, if we might end up having to see these come back to the Board of Zoning Appeals if we do limit that to two feet, three inches. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if that would create problems in the future for, for uh, if that would pigeonhole future carriers. Um, and I asked Ms. Kelly Jacobs to come back up to the, to the uh, uh, podium, and, and I have a question for her. Well, I think that goes to kind of what my concern was. It could be four feet, but you could plop it right down in the middle of that space, and it still wouldn't be visible. So I'm really more concerned about sight line because we're still going to make them say the reef can hold it, however big it is, mm -hmm. to get the building permit. So I guess I'm trying to, my question about the motion was how do we word it to address not necessarily the size but the sight line issues. This seems to be very minimal in this case because of the height coupled with the distance away from the edge of the building. But you could have the same height and move it closer, and now it's a big obstruction because the sight line is, I mean, it looks worse. So that was, that was kind of my, that was where I was, what my question was or what I was thinking about. Ms. Uh, Ms. Kelly Jacobs, yes, um, how does the size of, of this uh, equipment cabinet compare to to what other carriers AT&T, Verizon might might have in the future? Um, well, Clearwire is is a Wi-Fi company where you have Verizon and AT&T. They're all you know the wireless companies. Typically, when we build out the other carriers, we use prefabricated shelters. Now, on a lot of rooftops, when we do co-locations on rooftops, we'll find a mechanical room within inside the building that we'll try to go into. Um, and typically, a carrier <coughs> doesn't put a huge shelter on a roof. I mean, some instances they have, but typically they will try to find an alternative to that. Um, they can use cabinets, but each carrier has a different um, manufacturer equipment, you know, specs that they use. So. This is a small cabinet. This is, you know, a 49 square foot space. Typically, when we do space leasing for carriers, I look at doing a 12 by 20. So you look at a little bit of a larger scenario, more radios with the wireless than you do with the clear wires. So it could vary. I mean, typically, if if a, if it really depends a lot on what the zoning would like to see, I mean, a carrier will do their best to adhere to any kind of zoning. They don't like variances, so. If it's something that you guys decide that, hey, we want it to not be visible, then that's the carriers will design around what, what will happen on that rooftop. They're, they can be flexible, but typically they are larger than Clearwire. But I will say that most of them try not to go on the roof with anything that heavy. I mean, they'll try to go inside the building somewhere first. I don't mind amending my motion. Um, however, I, I, my only confusion a little bit is is we're, we're saying that this we're we're giving them the right, but we're also saying that sounds like that we're also going to use this as the parameter of all other co locators, but we don't want to set parameters. Uh, I mean. Uh, I, you know, you want your cake and eat it too, or so. You see what I'm trying to say you here. Use the view shed model. Exactly. Like this diagram here, like, like to Adam's point. Right. You might have a four foot one that's next to the wall, but if you use this, you know, maybe that'd be a guideline for a motion. Of, Correct. If you're trying to establish a much the baseline of what, what you want, use the the per view shed model. Per yeah, perhaps if if the uh, uh, if the motion was so that the um, that the that a certain hundred number of hundred feet away from the building that the equipment wasn't visible, um, perhaps that would be 
No, because then you could then you could have something that was you know monstrous up there. If you, as long as you got five hundred feet away from the building, mm -hmm. uh, you could really have something pretty monstrous up there. I think. That's your point. So you're not going to be able to put something monstrous on a rooftop because structurally it will not hold. I mean, typically all the carriers, before they sign any agreement, they want to make sure structurally that that rooftop can hold the equipment. So typically you won't see the biggest of biggest on top of the rooftops. They'll go with whatever structurally will be sound up there. So structural integrity is probably the most important thing that they look at. I, I candidly don't see any problem with, with requiring if it's, you know, maybe three two others three others they're going to locate on here coming back to the bza and, and applying so that would remedy this whole yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> and, and we we approve this on its own merits and we're not that's where i was trying to go with this we're i think it, i understand the thought process of establishing the use but it sounds like that at the same time we're trying to set parameters well I think that's a somewhat difficult. Back to Mr. Dodd's comment that I was trying to restrict the height, but I understand. And then you get into okay, well, we're going to get to the site distance. It, there, there's too many variables to to try to have a parameter that you're going to stick with. Could we? I guess Mr. Ives could jump in here. Is there? Let's assume that someone wanted to co-locate and they were going to place the box somewhere inside the building and just needed to put these antenna up, which are gonna be behind the parapet wall. Is there any way to, to say, you can put the antennas up as long as you don't have to put a box, but if you're gonna put a box up there, then you gotta come back to see us about it. That might save somebody, give them incentive to place it somewhere else. Because really, if the antenna is gonna be behind the parapet wall and be invisible, you'd hate to make them come back, but if they're gonna to try to put a box on that roof, I think we'd like to see it. But I don't know if we're sparsing out too much there, or if we just need to have them come back. Or if we went back to Mr. Halliburton's original motion, and if they exceeded, if, if anybody exceeded that, that number, then they would have to come back. But we go back to his comment that depends on where this thing's located, where the box is located, irrespective of, of uh, the size. Mm -hmm. Let's just bring it back. Yeah. It certainly has been our practice that the, 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 the special use permit does establish the use. Uh, We, it would seem to me that we if have we were going to change the structure, anything we do, if they add something to it, then that's outside the application, and we always come back to reconsider that, it seems like to me. With, with uh, co-locations on towers, we traditionally uh, we do, do not bring those back to the Board of Zoning Appeals unless it's, um, and it's a rare occasion that it is specifically called out uh, in the motion that each co-location come back to the board. Typically, uh, once the special use permit for the cell tower is established, then uh, they're allowed to, to co-locate uh, without coming back to the Board of Zoning Appeals, <coughs> uh, unless the condition is placed on the original approval. Uh, it occurs to me that perhaps we could put the condition that uh, uh, state here that this the use is being approved and the uh, the, in, uh, the inclusion, the construction of uh, facilities that are above the parapet roof line is, are being approved and uh, go ahead and state in it that in a, on a co-location if any part of the equipment is to uh, be above the parapet wall uh, then it'll have to come back for, for BZA approval because, again, it could be five foot tall depending on where it's located and be less visible than this one is. 
and it could be just an inch over the parapet wall if it's right up next to it and it's a different color, it can be very visible. So, uh, and, and it, I think it be, would be hard to set that kind of a parameter because each case, if it's going to be at all above, each case will be on its own on merits. That seems to me to be a reasonable condition that we can, can put on this. And I will revise my motion to say that uh, I'd like to move that we approve this plan as submitted, subject to uh, sub subject to staff comments and um, any future uh, co-locations uh, that no equipment or well, no equipment would be going above the parapet wall, and if so, come back before the BZA. As well as the original condition that you stated that 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 this particular application that all equipment and antenna be behind the parapet wall to, clar to clarify the, the discrepancy in the plans. Correct. Okay. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second then. Um, any further discussion? And that is subject to all other staff comments. Removing staff comment number one. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Ms. Kelly Jacobs, that application has been approved. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll move on now to application Z10050 by Ms. Cynthia R. Sherwin, requesting special, a special use permit in order to conduct a home occupation of hair salon at her residence located at 811 North Church Street. And this property is located in a residential duplex zone. Mr. Baum, if you'd review that application for us, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. The subject property is located along the west side of North Church Street, just to the south of, uh, of Loki. Um, it is currently improved with a single family residence. And uh, even though it is zoned residential duplex, there's a single family residence on the property. Uh, also a uh, detached outbuilding. And I'll show you the aerial photo right now. This is the applicant's property here at 811 North Church. Um, there's her detached accessory structure. Um, the area is prim primarily residential in nature. There's a mixture of single family and multifamily uses in the area. And there are a few institutional uses as well, as including a uh, daycare to the south of the subject property, a couple parcels to the south, and a church and a church parking lot to the north along uh, North Church Street. Uh, the applicant would like to uh, uh, construct an addition under the rear of her house. Uh, it will appear as if it is a part of the actual single family home. Uh, it will contain the area that she will use for her hair salon and it will also uh, contain uh, both an open porch and a screened in porch on the back that will not necessarily be for the business use but will be for her own, for her, her own residential enjoyment. Uh, the applicant has submitted um, documentation uh, addressing sections eight and nine of the zoning ordinance, the standards for uh, special use permits. Um, what, I'd like to, what I'd like to do now is go over the site plan. Uh, the applicant proposes to pave her existing driveway. It's a gravel driveway now that comes in off of North Church Street. And she will actually expand it directly adjacent to the building. It's a uh, one car width driveway, uh, but, there, but it's going to flare out in the back, so there'll be plenty of room for uh, parking for herself and for her customers. Uh, she has an existing laundry room on the back of the building. It looks like it was an addition onto the building at some point uh, after the original structure was built, and she plans to um, demolish that, uh, that uh, laundry room and then build the, uh, the addition onto the rear of her house. And that addition will extend out about uh, 21 feet 3 inches from the original uh, rear wall of the house. <coughs> the 
Here you can see an elevation of the rear of the house, once it will look, what it will look like once the uh, addition is complete. You can see that uh, it's got a uh, uh, covered porch area in the rear. Uh, here is the actual floor plan of the salon and of the uh, porch, as you can see. Um, here's the open porch and the screened-in porch, kind of a waiting area and the actual salon area itself, which is where she will have uh, the salon chair and a sink. And there's a uh, new laundry room here, as well as a, uh, a half bath in addition. Uh, in addressing the, uh, the uh, standards for home-based businesses, uh, the applicant uh, will not exceed the maximum 25 percent of, uh, of the allowable area for a home-based business. She'll be at right around 21 percent. Uh, the total square footage after construction is complete will be uh, 1,877 square feet, and she will utilize approximately 392 square feet, which is 21 percent of, uh, of the total square footage of the house post addition. Uh, she has indicated in her uh, letter that she will have no employees and is not proposing any signage for this home-based business. Uh, the, uh, uh, the applicant has committed to having no overlapping appointments and clients will visit her house by appointment only. Um, days of operation will be Monday through Friday and the hours of operation will be 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. So her uh, last client will, will leave no later than 7 p.m. Uh, she has indicated that the maximum number of appointments that she will schedule per business day will be five. Uh, if the board approves this request, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, building permits must be obtained for the demolition of the existing laundry room and the construction of the salon slash porch addition. And the applicant shall not begin operation of the business until a certificate of occupancy has been issued by the building and codes department for the addition. Uh, number two, there should be no overlapping appointments. Number three, all appointments shall end no later than seven. And number four, there should be a maximum of five appointments per business day. Uh, with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Ms. Sherwin is here as well if you have any questions for her. All right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Questions for Mr. Bomley? The only question that I have with the addition, I'm assuming there's no setback issues. No. Okay. No setback issues and no maximum lot coverage issues. And I do have some photographs if you'd like to see them. Right. Where, where's the business now, Matthew? She currently has a, uh, a booth at uh, Salon Suites on Northwest Broad Street by, uh, uh, by the bowling alley. Uh, this is the front of her house. There's the existing gravel driveway. This is looking at the rear of her house. This is that uh, laundry room addition that she will be demolishing, and the larger addition will be going in its place, but it will actually come out all the way to this corner of the house right here. So it will actually be wider and deeper than the uh, existing laundry room. This is a side view of, the, of that laundry room that will be coming down. And the entrance into the salon will be from uh, from this side of the building. This is this is looking at it from the driveway. This is looking back towards Church Street down the driveway, and all of this area will be will be asphalted all the way up to the side of the building. So it'll be enough room for her to park her vehicle here, and still have room for her uh, clients' vehicles to uh, back in and out of the driveway. This is a view of the backyard, um, looking back towards her rear property line. As you can see, she has a, a nice stand of uh, mature trees along that, uh, that rear property line.
And this is looking at the house that is directly to the south. And Ms. Sherwin has actually submitted a letter uh, from the property owner, Ms. Jill Butler, 809 North Church Street. And I put that on your desk. She gave that to me right before the meeting, um, stating that she has no objection to the proposed hair salon. And that is Ms. Butler's house right there. I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have them. All right, thank you, Mr. Palmer. Any questions for Mr. Palmer? Right, Mr. Sherwin, anything you'd like to add to the application? Sure, you come forward to the podium, please. Can you show us that picture? That one of the parking? The one of your driveway? Yes. The way that you described uh, the parking arrangements. I, I had a gathering the other day and I got everybody to park in to the side. And that's, that's the one. It's right here. Yeah. And pushing the special buttons? No. Okay. It's up. All right, good. Um, but just, yeah, coming in here, I can do this. They actually came in and dropped, pulled in this way. Sorry, I'm not good with the mouse. And then that way to where they were actually coming in, um, I guess, horizontally to the to the street. And from the when you're driving by, there's a huge magnolia tree in my neighbor's yard, and you can't visually even see the cars. You might be able to see a little bit of the bumper, but I can get three parking spots there. Not that I'm going to need them, but that was what I was planning on doing with that area. Because it's a good size dip from the way my house stands out, so you can you, I catch it when I'm throwing. Okay, <laughs> that's, you know, that's all I wanted to add to it was that. You're not talking about striping on that, right? Well, you know, I, I thought about it, but I figured if I just put a big sign up there saying, you know, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I wasn't <laughs> <laughs> from the street. I, I, I want to I have the house still appear like my house and have a translucent look to, you know, to the fact that it's a business. But no, I, I just, I know that that would be more easy for, uh, easier for my clients to be able to pull out and back out, go back out the driveway to the street, so. But no, 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 no stripes, no, no lines. But thank you. And, and we we caught what you threw to us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. This time, then, we'll conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further. Discussions or a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like a motion that we approve the application subject to the staff comments. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Ms. Sherwin, that application has been um, granted. I appreciate Thank you. All right, uh, we'll move on now to application Z10051 by Ms. Kimberly Temple requesting a special use permit in order to conduct a home occupation at Hair Salon at her residence located at 2710 Spalding Circle. And this property is located in a residential single family RS15 zone. Mr. Bromley. Thank you, Chairman Rogers. And just before I forget, I did put something uh, in, at your desks. The, uh, the applicant brought a, a petition signed by her neighbors in support of her application. Uh, so before I forgot, I wanted to make, make sure I mentioned that to you. Subject property is located in the countryside subdivision on Spalding Circle. There's the subject property there. And if you're not familiar with the countryside subdivision, it is located uh, just to the east of Cason Lane. Um, it is the very northernmost residential area after you pass the commercial area on Cason Lane south of uh, Old Fort Parkway. Uh, property is zoned RS-15 and it is a, a pretty substantial sized city lot. Uh, the applicant would like to, um, is requesting a special use permit. Uh, she would like to uh, conduct a home-based business, a hair salon uh, at her residence. Um, now hers, uh, unlike the previous applicant, would not be in the main the principal structure on the property. It would actually be conducted out of the uh, three-car detached garage uh, that is at the very 
It's right here at the very southwest corner of the property. Now, this is this portion of Spalding Circle is at the very uh, is at the back of the cul-de-sac. Um, so there are only about uh, seven or eight houses along this section of Spalding Circle. Now, a little bit more of a close-up. The applicant's driveway enters in here off the bulb of the cul-de-sac. It's an existing uh, concrete driveway that's one car width as you enter off Spalding Circle and is actually two car widths as you get closer to the house and it widens out to a three car width driveway all the way at the back near the three car garage. And the here's the existing three car garage, uh, one of the three bays of which would be uh, converted into the uh, actual salon area. And here is the house. Stated, I stated the obvious there on that site plan and just wrote house there. Here's a, a, a look at the floor plan of the applicant's proposed salon. This is the uh, entryway to the uh, to the salon. It will be the if you're looking at the front of the garage, it would be the uh, the left hand or the southernmost bay. Uh, the existing garage door would be removed and replaced with French doors, and uh, you can see uh, the, the layout of the uh, of the salon and the chairs and the and the workstations. And uh, in addition to uh, those items, uh, a bathroom would also be installed. And the applicant will have to run um, uh, water and sewer out to the detached accessory structure as it's not currently there. Uh, and she also plans on installing a wall separating the uh, private residential use of the of the detached garage versus the salon use of the detached garage. Uh, the dimensions of the garage are 896 square feet. Uh, her plan is to convert one of the three bays into the detached garage. Uh, the size of the salon area will be 11 by 28, which is 308 square feet. Uh, if, a home, if a home based business is to be conducted out of a detached accessory structure, it cannot take up more than 500 square feet of that detached accessory structure and the area that will be devoted to the home based business in this instance will be uh, 308 square feet which is which falls below the uh, maximum required the maximum allowed square footage uh, clients will visit the salon by appointment only uh, days of operation will be Monday through Thursday only and the hours of operation will be from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. So her last client of the day would uh, would leave no later than 5 p.m. And the applicant has indicated that the maximum number of appointments that she will schedule per business day will be four. Uh, Ms. Temple will have no employees at uh, for her home-based business, only herself, and uh, she proposes no signage, um, no exterior signage for the building either for the home occupation. Uh, a couple of things that uh, that I wanted to mention is that there appears to be a zoning violation and uh, and possible codes violations as well and we just ask that Ms. Temple remedy those violations before she begins uh, the operation of her home-based business. Uh, currently there are two boats and boat trailers on the property and our zoning ordinance allows for the storage of only one boat and boat trailer at a, uh, at a single-family residence and uh, so one of those two boats and boat trailers will have to be removed uh, Ms. Temple has indicated to me that she does plan on uh, on giving one of the two boats and boat trailers away and the other one will be placed at storage. As long as one of those is removed from the property, then uh, then that will comply with the uh, with the zoning ordinance. Uh, also in uh, in um, looking at the structure, it does appear to need some be in need of some renovation. Uh, in addition to the work that that uh, Ms. Temple plans to do on the inside of the building, uh, the exterior of the building does uh, show some visible signs of uh, of wear and aging, and uh, um, and I'll show you some photographs in a moment. Um, one of the recommended conditions of approval, and I'll just go ahead and read this one, is that prior to applying for building permits, the applicant should contact the Building and Codes Department 
to request a substandard building inspection for the detached garage and any violation should be remedied at a time frame to be decided by the building and codes department but no later than the salon beginning operation that way that any work that needs to be done to that building to bring it up to code uh, can be done coincident with the improvements that she plans on making to the building in order to uh, to uh, build out her salon on the inside uh, if the board approves this request, staff recommends the following conditions. I just read you number two. Uh, number one, building permits must be obtained for the work to be done on the detached garage in order to convert part of it into the salon. Uh, the applicant shall not begin operation of the business until a certificate of occupancy has been issued by the Building and Codes Department. Uh, number three, there should be no overlapping appointments. Number four, all appointments shall end no later than 5 p.m. And number five, there should be a maximum of four appointments per business day. Before we open the public hearing, I'll go ahead and show you the photographs. There's the existing detached garage. Here's the bay, uh, the garage door of which would be removed and the salon would be conducted out of this portion of the detached garage. There's a view of the front of the house, and you can see the garage here to the left and to the rear of the house. And you can see how the driveway flares out towards the rear. It's, as I mentioned, it uh, widens out to a three car width. And there is one of the boats uh, Ms. Temple has indicated that that's the one that will be going in storage and there's a smaller boat and boat trailer to the left of the, uh, of the garage and uh, she's indicated that they will be getting rid of that one in fairly short order. This is looking down at the end of the cul-de-sac. This is looking back up to the north. And with that being said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Ms. Temple is here if you have any questions for her. Right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Questions for Mr. Bomley? Mr. Bomley, the garage that we're talking about looks like to me it was built after the home was built. Was it permitted? Do we have any record of when that was done? or? I, I have not researched that. It, it looks like it's uh, like the structure has been there for quite a while. It looks it looks weathered as such that that it looks like it, it just wasn't finished to me. That's why I was wondering if there was a permit out there. On well, it, it looks like they they very recently replaced some of the some of the wood on the on the on the front of the structure. Oh, okay. And um, so I, I don't I don't believe any permits were were obtained for for that work and when you say they need to remedy the any building issues you're talking about the detached structure right yes sir that's correct that's correct uh, mr. Monty Kapavik is our uh, substandard building inspector and uh, Ms. Temple would need to contact him and he would need to go and do an inspection and the substandard inspection is is basically looking for um, issues with the building that 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 aren't meeting code um, whereas as opposed to a like, property maintenance inspection that would be looking for you know weeds and grass junk cars open storage in this instance uh, he's looking for elements of the building that are that are not um, meeting code that may not be structurally sound that um, may be deteriorating or rotted um, those are the kind of things that he's going to be looking for and, and any violations that he finds of that nature would have to be uh, would would be remedied at the same time as the uh, as the work would be done on the inside of the building. All right, thank you, Mr. Bomley. Ms. Temple, anything you'd like to add to your application? Um, the structure was there when I bought my house, so I don't know as far as the codes or anything as far as when it was built, if all that was met. I have no idea. Um, but the wood on the front, we it was struck by lightning towards the end of last summer. 
and the fire department. I, I thought it was still on fire, so I called the fire department. They came, and they were actually, you know, out there with the axes and stuff in the back. They, you know, went in there to see, I guess, if there were any fire or any, any sparks or anything. Um, the front, we started replacing some of the wood. The, I think it's hardy board, the siding. And uh, my husband is in construction, so he was starting to replace that. He's broke his arm, so we've kind of stopped just until, you know, all that can kind of heal up and he can start doing anything again. But I'm more than willing to do whatever I need to do, make sure that it meets codes or whatever. Thank you. All right. Thank you. There may be some questions for you. Any questions for Ms. Temple? The, the, you got a 20 foot, 24 foot trailer, I think, and a, a truck. Yes. Two sport utility vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two boats. Yeah. Um, I know it sounds <laughs> um, The boat to the side. Trucks, actually, I think there's two tr pickup trucks, right? Well, I do. Actually, <laughs> we own two pickup trucks. His, he does, he's a subcontractor for 84 Lumber. He does windows and doors, new home installation. So that's where he carries his windows. But um, his the, the red truck in the driveway, like in the past month, the transmission has just went out. So <laughs> with his arm broken and everything, I haven't been able to get a lot of stuff like that taken care of. But he had to purchase another truck as opposed to just putting a whole lot of money back into this one. He is going to fix it and probably put it somewhere else. But I realize it can't all be there. Um, and the trailer is always there. Like he, you know, but he doesn't come home till usually there's there's a few you know he does on occasion get off early but it's usually dark by the time he pulls in and the pontoon boat is going to be moved i don't i mean it's just too big for my driveway period anyway especially if i want to have a business there and the other boat we're just going to get rid of i have a couple people that actually are interested and they want it so i'm probably just going to give that away yeah that that's you just look like you're going to get a pinch for space i mean i see if in the pictures, the truck and the 24 foot trailer aren't even in the driveway. They have no, to park that no, up they're not. That. Um, that's all that'll be there is my car and that truck and trailer. But his he's gone every day, so his the truck and trailer aren't there during the you know daytime hours when I would be seeing people. So I mean, there's plenty of room for that in my driveway without everything else that's there. But I understand it does look bad. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, at this time, then we'll declare or we'll uh, conduct a public hearing. Anyone present wishing to speak for or against the application, if you would please come forward. And seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussions on the motion. If there's no discussion, I'll make a motion that we approve. The application is subject to all staff comments. No second. All right, motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, Ms. Temple, that application has been granted. Thank you. All right, so we'll move on now to staff reports and other business. Just, uh, we, we should change the name of the staff reports, other business, and heads up. Someone to give you a just heads up. She had, I think she has a question. Uh, if, if, if you'd like to hold on a few minutes, I'll be, would be done with the meeting, and I'll be happy to tell you. I'm sorry. Uh, I just wanted to give the board a heads up that uh, at our next meeting, we'll be considering the 2011 BZA calendar of meeting dates. So um, in your September BZA packages, you'll be getting that the draft of the calendar. So when you get that, just look at it closely and see if it if it if it has any conflicts with your schedules or with spring break schedules things things of that nature and just be prepared to talk about, talk about it at our next meeting other than that i have nothing all right if there's no further discussion then we are adjourned